But I like this idea of requalifying for a job. And it actually comes from their COO of Shopify, uh, Harley Finkelstein. This idea of requalifying for your job each year is the process of stepping back and relooking at the question, how can I add new value to this role, this job that I have, or new value to this team or the overall mission in the year ahead? And am I the right person for this? And if I am, how would I requalify for this job? And how would I articulate what is the new value, the new value that I'm going to bring to this role, to this company? And what's the new value I'm going to bring to this organization, to my team, to the culture that we're trying to create? Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced. The best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey everyone, it's Jason and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast. Wherever you're listening to this or however you're coming to this today, I am so glad that you are with us. It continues to be a challenging and uh you know, strange year out there for all of us that, again, we're in the midst of challenges and obstacles, and, and certainly we're, they continue. We're not through this, uh, but we are absolutely in it. And uh, there are also many opportunities around us every single day to uh, to think about the way that we move and how we impact uh, whatever it is that you're focused on and working on right now and also for the culture of the space that you are moving in and out of every day. I want this to be a place for you to take a deep breath to be able to step back, to, to be fed with some positivity. And as always, my hope with this is that this is a time, this podcast in your weekly routine, a place for you to step back, to take that deep breath, but also to have some content that engages your mind and your heart and help you intentionally navigate all that you're experiencing in your life and your work. Um, so this is that place for you to step back and to take that deep breath. I'm more convinced of this than ever, that uh, authentic leadership is not only needed in the world today, but also leaders that are creating compelling cultures that care for the people and bring out the very best in each other and what we proactively want to create and build together is what is needed in the world today. So again, thank you for uh, everybody who's joining us. However you've come to this today, if you've been a part of this from season one, episode one, from the very beginning, thank you and welcome back. If you are new to this podcast, then I say thank you, welcome And I invite you to go back to, uh, there's so many episodes in seasons one, two, and three, amazing episodes, interviews with thought leaders and uh, amazing people from around the world, and also uh, episodes that have received tremendous feedback. Uh, So nuggets that have been valuable to people along their journey. So I invite you to check those out. So again, thank you for being a part of today. Uh, as always, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to anyone out there who, uh, obviously listens to the podcast, but subscribes to the podcast, rates the podcast, five stars, of course, uh, leaves a nice review, shares it with the people in your network and in throughout your team and your organization, your friends, because all of those ways are the ways in which this spreads. This amplifies these messages further in the world. As much as it's uncomfortable for me to ask that of you and to to keep saying that, uh, that's just the way that it works, that these are the ways the algorithms work. And every time you subscribe, rate, review, share, that helps uh, these messages be able to reach more people and people to find these messages. So thank you for everybody that takes the time to do that. I'm eternally grateful to you for that. Today... I want to talk about the idea of requalifying for your job, <laughs> requalifying for your job. Now, before you break out in hives or start, you know, you know, shaking and if, uh, all your own doubts or inadequacies or your own mental gymnastics begin of trying to like make sense of this and freak out that you don't want to requalify for your job. You're glad you have your job and you hope it stays or, 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 or maybe you're somebody that wants out of your job, but either way, I'm going to assume that, that, uh, I don't want you to freak out, but I like this idea of requalifying for a job. And again, if you're thinking about it through the context of your job, your your literal job uh, at work, 
uh, your mi- the, the, the mission or the project that you're focused in on right now, then great. If you're just thinking about this through the lens of your life and requalifying or intentionally living the life that you want, uh, then I welcome you to this idea today. But this idea of requalifying for your job is an idea that comes from Shopify. And of course, if you know Shopify, the company that uh, is a mammoth company that's doing amazing things ar- around the world, of that it brought us the ability in the back end of many websites uh, to be able to uh, create that kind of shopping cart technology to, to to have e-commerce happening, and it's helped little companies be able to have a marketplace and obviously big giant ones as well. But whether you know of Shopify or you don't even know of Shopify, trust me, they have had an enormous impact on how you navigate your way around the internet and experience e-commerce in the world today. So the idea of requalifying for your job actually comes from their COO of Shopify, uh, Harley Finkelstein. Uh, Harley talks about this idea of requalifying for your job. And in fact, I heard him talk about this on, on a great interview that he did on, on the uh, Tim Ferriss podcast. Uh, one of my great friends and, and listeners to this podcast, Brooks Matthews, thank you for uh, pointing it out. I love it when anybody uh, reaches out to me and says, hey, there's something you ought to know, or this made a great connection to this thing you talked about in your podcast, or a great idea I think connects to your message around leadership and culture and mindset. Anytime anybody gives me those kind of things is, is really awesome. So thanks, Brooks, for, for saying, hey, you got to listen to to Tim Ferriss's podcast about with Harley because this is great stuff that, that you'll really uh, enjoy and uh, and he was right this idea of requalifying for your job each year is the process of stepping back and relooking at the question how can I add new value to to stepping back and asking ourselves the question of how can I add new value to this role, this job that I have, or new value to this team or the overall mission in the year ahead. And at, at Shopify, they have this, this process where, where each year they kind of requalify for their job, which even he, as the COO of Shopify, that he comes into and he meets with those key leaders or board members or whoever it is that they, he meets with. And in, in many ways, he, he, he goes through a process to kind of to make a, a, a to, to look at his his job and to say now to be the COO of Shopify that's different that's a different company than it was even last year that has grown and is changing and has new things on the horizons am I the right person for this and if I am how would I requalify for this job and how would I articulate what is the new value the new value that I'm going to bring to this role to this company And what's the new value I'm going to bring to this organization, to my team, to the culture that we're trying to create? And so they go through this process, again, to to kind of re-qualify for the job that they might have or the, the role or the mission that lies ahead. And so many of us, of course, as humans, as leaders, and certainly as entire teams or organizations, or again, if you're thinking about this through the family structure or friend groups, however you're thinking about this, it's, it's so easy for many of us to just go on the same way we did it yesterday, the same way that we did it last year. And there are too many, uh, in my observations and many experiences, many organizations or teams, uh, the observation that I've had is that, that, that many operate in this kind of every year it, they start out the year with the, the just trying to maintain or they just of where we were last year and what we did last year. And now let's just bump it up a little percentage and then say, OK, those are our goals for the year ahead. And so it's very reactionary in so many different ways. And so it's easy for us all, again, as as individuals, but as, also as entire teams and companies. It's easy for us to we kind of float from day to day, from week to week, from month to month quarter to quarter, and even year to year with just kind of the same things in front of us. And too many leaders, teams, and organizations get stuck in this kind of routine and and just trying to do just what we did last year rather than, and there's all kinds of good reasons why, by the way, there's all kinds of reasons why we do that is because the pace of life, the number of things that we have on our plate, the busyness, the distractions, 
that uh, and also once we've started something we need to maintain something that we've already started and so uh, there's a good reason as to why we fall into these patterns of just kind of maintaining and just keeping what we started last year and just returning to the same goals we might have had last year and just bumping it up a little percentage just so we are you know growing in some way there's all kinds of reasons why we do that but true progress and we know advancement and also compelling vision and goals and priorities, it comes from stepping back in order to move ourselves forward. My, my official company, Step Back Leadership Consulting, uh, in the tagline of Step Back Leadership Consulting, of, of the company that I founded, is the tagline, Step Back to Move Forward. And the reason why it's Step Back to Move Forward is because as I've experienced and led and, and, and um, it you know, witnessed and observed in teams and organizations all the time, that one of the ways that we break out of that routine and those patterns of just maintaining is every time we step back individually and or collectively as an entire team and organization and step back to reconnect to, hey, hold on, where are we on the map? Let's be honest about about where we are and, and all those projects and, and the mission and where we've been. Let's assess and understand where are we on the map, what have we been doing well, what have we not been doing well, what are our opportunities in the future. Every time we step back and, and are honest about where we are and then begin to challenge ourselves to think about, well, what is it we would try to create in the year ahead? I have no doubt that there will be time in the near future, I'm not sure when, but where there will be power in congregating again, power in bringing your whole team together, your entire company and organization together in one space for that powerful keynote speech, that discussion that has to happen as a team, an entire organization about leadership and culture and mindset. But until then, we are in a virtual world. And so if I can add value to your team, your company, your organization through a virtual keynote speech or just helping your team and organization have the conversation that's the currency for change that you need to be having internally, I hope you'll track us down and let us know how we can be helpful at jasonvbarger.com. And, and where is it we're really trying to go? And then to go through that process to requalify in some ways or, or, or then to ask ourselves, okay, well, if that's where we're trying to go, then how would we structure ourselves and who are the right people and right resources and right priorities that we need to put in place in order to achieve that? Then every time we step back and do that, we actually are moving ourselves forward. Which I know for many leaders, teams, and organizations, again, the idea of, well, we can't afford to take the time. We, you know, we can't do that off-site meeting. We can't, no, we can't take a full day. We can't take a half day. We can't, geez, we can't even take an hour. We've got so much happening that we can't even, it's a, a waste of time or energy to step back. We just, we, we can't do it. It's in those kind of environments where the mindset is we can't afford to do it because we have so many things spinning and so many distractions and so many things that that we bought into this idea that busyness equates to effectiveness and yet every single time in those environments this myth that all of us are you know we, we can't take the time because everybody's got to be running off scattered doing their own thing you know quote unquote go do your job well the reality is is what that leads to is scatteredness ineffectiveness and often a lack of alignment around priorities and efforts that would actually move us forward and stimulate progress. And so it's easier to just spin the wheels and keep maintaining, quote unquote, rather than stepping ourselves back. But every time we step back and go through those exercises, we actually move ourselves forward. And that's why it's an ethic of the best leaders, teams, and organizations on the planet. It just is. If you study the best in the world, this is what they do. And I love this language or this idea of requalifying because it, it, it makes us personalize it and also look at if this is where we're trying to go, then it makes us reassess and refocus, re-engage, and also ask the question of, okay, what new value can I and we bring in the year ahead? And are, am I qualified and am I kind of committing to be a part of that role and, and bring new value to the people around me. 
you know, those of you that know of my book, uh, Remember, then, then this idea uh, probably resonates with you. Again, this idea of remembering uh, was all about uh, each day, what is it we need to remember? What, is, what are the things I need to cognitively remember about who I'm trying to be in the world and what I'm trying to accomplish with, you know, my, the relationships in my life and certainly with the, 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 the career or the, 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 the you know, mission or the projects that I'm engaged with and the kind of work that I'm hoping to do in the world. That I, I need to remember that each day. But then also the reason why it's called remember is because what is the process that we go through to renew our memberships? to re-up our memberships, and to kind of re-qualify for, okay, well, what are the things in front of us? And let me make sure that I am remembering what is that focus? What is it, what, you know, what are the things I need to then either let go of or uh, change? And what are the, what's my response going to be to lead the kind of action that I want in the world? So this idea, whether it's requalifying for your job, like Shopify talks about, or I know a uh, Hall of Fame basketball coach Rick Pitino uh, has a book called The One Day Contract, which that idea of, of kind of creating a new contract every single day for yourself or for your team, like all we can focus on is let's make sure are we committed today? You know, all of these things are, are things to kind of to ask ourselves, do we refocus on and requalify for what is that mission that's in front of us? Not the one that yesterday, but the one for today. And I know for myself, again, to personalize it, this idea of requalifying or this idea of remembering, renewing the memberships, is each year it's been powerful for me to step back and to ask myself so, uh, the question of how am I, you know, again, requalifying for maybe or remembering, renewing my membership as a husband? Again, for Amy and I, in the next year of our marriage, what, what, what does that mean? And are we, are we going to kind of renew that membership? As a dad, as my children are at growing different ages and stages of life, what does it mean to be a dad and renew that membership? What does it mean to recommit as a friend? With the clients that I serve and have ongoing partnerships with, each year we step back and together we look at, hey, not only where have we been, but where is it we're trying to go? And what, how are we trying to develop the leaders and the culture and that clarity of mission and vision and values next within their team or across their entire company? And then beginning to say, are we still committed to each other, to going on this journey together? None of this stuff, developing leaders and culture is not a drive through experience. It doesn't magically just happen overnight. So we've got to be committed along the way to staying and kind of requalifying and renewing that partnership together. So that then we can say, how are we going to add new value in the year ahead with each other? And then we recommit to the mission and the next steps that are along our path. But it starts with kind of stepping back so that we can allow ourselves to move forward. So one of the ways in which I believe that we remember and or requalify for that job or for that mission or that project is we need to, to step back and we need to remember what is the mission. And we've got to return to purpose. Again, the beginning of every mission, you know, whether it's, again, Amy and I in our relationship or as a father or for every client that I serve to, to, to return back to what's our mission. What are we trying to accomplish together, and why are we going on this journey together? Then we need to be honest about what needs to shift, not just what are we going to maintain, which, of course, those are good conversations about what are the things we've begun and the habits we've formed, the good things that we've got going that we want to continue to, 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 to maintain, but what needs to shift? What are the things we need to let go of and kind of release what are the baggage or the bad things or the, the habits, the way we've been operating lately that we need to, you know, we need to shift that way of doing it? And what are those new opportunities that might exist? We need to be able to, to identify what we need to shift. And then also we need to know what is the new value that we're committed to bringing to each other? What is that new value? And so why are you in the role that you're in? If we're thinking about it from, a, from an individual standpoint, like why am I in the role that I'm in? And what new value am I committed to bringing? 
And what does the, the value that this team or this entire organization, what's the value that they need from me in the year ahead? And then what is that new value then that I'm committed to bringing? In our teams, in our organizations, in your relationships right now, again, how, would, how could you requalify? You know, each year, again, a, a, a nod of celebration, appreciation for my wife, Amy, is every year we have, we have the, the process and the commitment to every year we take a couple of days where we get away and, and we do our own little visioning retreat. And that process of vision is, is, us, is us for our own relationship of stepping back in order to move ourselves forward. But we step back and not only look at, hey, how did the last year go and, and, and celebrate things and talk about things that were difficult and all that, but we also look to the year ahead and we start to assess, well, where is it we're trying to go and how are we committed to traveling together? And we kind of requalify, we renew that membership or that partnership to each other. And we talk about how are we committed to traveling on the next leg of our journey. And so whether that's uh, in a relationship in your life or I believe the most successful teams and organizations, group dynamics, companies on the planet, they all are engaged in this process of stepping back in order to move ourselves forward, requalifying and re-identifying what is the mission that ahead of us next and how can we add new value along our path. So as always on these podcasts, I want to leave you with a couple of questions. What role would it be helpful for you to requalify for in your life and work? What role would it be helpful for you to requalify for in your life and, and work? What's your mission for that role for that you're imagining right now? What, what is your mission? What needs to shift and what op new opportunities exist? And what new value can you bring? Or does the relationship or the team of the organization, what new value do they need you to bring in the year ahead? Remember, the best leaders, teams, and cultures on the planet continue to stimulate progress by stepping back in order to move ourselves forward. They requalify, they remember, renew those memberships, and they focus on the mission and the vision and the values of how they're committed to traveling together and as I often talk about where we look is where we go what we give our hearts our, our eyes our attention to that's where we end up going and in order to to create the culture that we want for the road ahead of us we all have to be ambassadors of that culture and renew our membership and requalify for what's in front of us thank you for listening to today's podcast and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using. And share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to your organization, or you have a question or comment about this podcast, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we all are ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you is me, is us, be a thermostat.